The National Marine Mammal Foundation study discovered that just like people, bottlenose dolphins develop metabolic syndrome and diabetes-like symptoms. But dolphins who ate certain fish could reverse the disorder. Joining me with how the findings could translate to improving health in humans is my guest, veterinarian Stephanie Van Watson, director of translational medicine and research at the National Marine Mammal Foundation. And Stephanie, what exactly did you find in bottlenose dolphins that could be linked to preventing diabetes and metabolic syndrome in humans? Sure, well, what we have found over the last few years, Peggy, is that dolphins, just like humans, can get this disease called metabolic syndrome, and that is blood changes, like higher insulin, higher triglycerides. And because there are studies in humans that show some studies in humans that show that if you eat a lot of fish, you might be protected against getting this disease. Other studies had, didn't show that effect, and even others suggested that fish might be increase your risk of metabolic syndrome. And so since we at the foundation protect and care for dolphins, which eat only fish, we thought we would look at uh, the fish and the dolphins and see if we can unlock the secret part of fish that may be protective against dolphins. And so you did. So the study was conducted then at the uh, foundation with how many dolphins? That's right, we had 49 dolphins in the study and it was a mix of wild dolphins from Sarasota Bay, Florida, and then also a handful 30 dolphins actually from the Navy's program. And what did you find as far as uh, fish, uh, the kind of fish that they ate, the fatty acid link, and how that might relate to people? Sure, so because of the, a lot of excitement, it's hard to go to the grocery store and not see fish oil pills with omega-3 fatty acids, which come from fish. So we looked at 55 fatty acids in the fish and the, uh, that the dolphins ate and the blood, and we were very surprised to find that there was a saturated fat called heptadecanoic acid. You and I will call it C17. Yes, <laughs> C17 fatty acid, okay. Uh, and, uh, and dolphins with higher levels of C17 in their blood had lower, healthier levels of insulin. And where did the dolphins get it? The dolphins get it from the fish. So not all fish have C17, which might be the secret of why some studies in humans worked and some didn't. That, uh, for example, capelin, a fish that's commonly fed to Navy dolphins had no detectable C17, while mullet and pinfish, common fish in Sarasota Bay, Florida, had high levels of C17. What about people? Where can they get this C17 fatty acid? So this is my favorite part of the, stu <laughs> of the study. Uh, C17 is present in uh, at some fish, we know that. Dairy fat, so that includes whole fat milk, uh, yogurt, as well as butter. And then there are some studies showing in rye there are probably more foods with C17, but we hope to learn more soon. So people are gonna be watching this, people who like milk and eat yogurt. Should they just go out and start powerhousing on you know, whole milk and yogurt? We're not ready there, we're not there yet. So the studies are early, and there are actually some interesting and compelling uh, large based human population studies in Europe and Japan that support what we found, that showed that people with higher levels of C17 in their blood are less likely to develop prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. So it's encouraging that these two different uh, populations and studies are coming together. Why wouldn't people have enough of this C17 uh, protein? You know, they, like I said, they eat the yogurt, they drink the milk, so why wouldn't we already be covered on that? Well, we had that exact same question, and because C17 is present in dairy fat, we went to the grocery store, pulled some products off the shelf, and we tested a non-fat, low-fat, whole-fat uh, dairy products and butter, and we found that non-fat dairy products had no C17 in it. It needed the fat in it. Low fat had some, whole fat more, and butter had six times higher levels of C17 even compared to whole fat. But again, we're not ready to go out and eat, uh, you know, a pound of butter right now because we're not sure uh, there's more study to be done. There's a lot more studies to be done, and also butter, other products may have good saturated fats and bad saturated fats. So we're really sitting and waiting to hear uh, how the science pans out with our collaborators. And you have another study coming up with children. We do, so we're looking at children uh, and working with children's hospitals here in San Diego and elsewhere. And we're starting with a, the same hypothesis we had with dolphins, that do children who have metabolic syndrome have lower C17 compared to children who don't? And if they do, we could do diet studies to increase their C17 intake and see if we saw the same alleviation of metabolic syndrome. All right, very interesting. Veterinarian Stephanie Van Watson, thank you so much. Great, thank you, Peggy.